Good day. Good day. Come now, I say good day. Good day. Lord Marshal, Lord, your service. This is where you hoot and holler and applaud for no apparent reason. <laughs> if you're prepared for merriment this day, say aye. Aye. If you're prepared for wondrous foods and crafts, say aye. Aye. If you're prepared to see a joust, perhaps even to the death, say aye. Aye. In that case, do I present no? No death. No death. If you're prepared to see joust, not to the death, say aye. Aye. Then I do present the knights of noble cause. and champion of my appointed realm. And I am Sir Roland, the Baron of Forescape, champion of all Ireland. Am I allowed to speak now? Am I allowed to speak? No, 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 no. My turn. You be quiet. You be quiet. All right, I'll shut up. My name is Sir Joseph, and I am master of the list. And I want to ask you once more again, are you ready? See our tournament joust at the hours of 1 and 30, and at the hour of 5 upon Swain Field. Lords and ladies, I ask you, are you ready for combat? Aye! Are you ready for dashing knights on horseback? Aye! Are you ready for mayhem? Aye! So until those times of part of the Swain Field, lords and ladies, we ask you to go forth and have a grand festival day! <laughs> of too much coffee. <laughs> Delighted to be here. Are we not all grateful for the Duke for hosting this glorious festival day? Aye. Well, I thought what better way than to show our gratitude than to start off this day with a song of open rebellion. <laughs> As I was heading homeward, bearing up a fruitful load from a day of sweat and toil in the field. I met with old man Winter as he came upon the road and he said, Stand and deliver, it's your life if you'll not yield. Well, he seemed a cruel season as he snatched up my reward with a smile as cold as frost upon the rose. I said, you might be, but Winter rest assured that in our fields of labor something else now surely grows. So come all ye folk of the district, Never waver, never tire We'll reclaim this land by our own two hands When we set the snow on fire We'll set old man snow on fire Well, it's been a long December Being ground below the heel Of winter with his harsh and bitter flames but the time is surely coming to rise up and to reveal That we're sick of paying tribute and we're through with playing games We're sick and tired of toil in a cold and barren ground While spring seems so very far away Yes, the time for waiting's done, so let's bring that harvest round And make winter rue the day So come all ye folk of the district Never waver, never tire We'll reclaim this land by our own two hands When we set the snow on fire We'll set old man snow on fire Oh, let this message quickly spread across this land That once was lost Till every mocking jay resound the call We don't care how long the odds We don't care how high the cost it's time for a snow to fall. So come on, you folk of the district. Never waver, never tire. We'll reclaim this land by our own two hands when we set the snow on fire. Oh, we'll set old man snow on fire. 
I am Sir Sigurd of the North. I am Sir Lionel de Marcus. And, Your Grace, I feel that their shoulders are significantly broad and strong enough, and that they also do need practice in the art of courtly love. Either would make excellent son-in-laws to thee, Your Grace. Yes. I shall need to interview them myself. They both, both are very strapping. Oh, my dear. I would sooner leave a wounded rabbit alone with a hungry pack of wolves than I would leave you alone with these two. Oh, he's my bearded bunny of love, worried about little old me. Not at all, my beloved bowl of jelly. It's their safety I fear for. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. We will speak of this later on today. Thank you, Your Grace. Oh, oh uh, Your Grace! Now, uh, yes, approach, approach. Oh, oh, th th thank you, Your, your Duke Linus. Ah. Oh. Oh, thank you, Your Grace. Uh, your Grace, I am Brother Wood, and this is my brother. Uh, I am Brother Coot, and we have traveled far from the coast of Spain, where the weather is fine, the wine is delicious, and the women, yes. The women are in. Uh, uh, <laughs> to convert is what he means. To convert. Uh, for, for that is what we do. Uh, we are Spanish missionaries, and as you know, your grace, since the fall of Alhambra and the Moorish retreat back to North Africa, the south of Spain is still rife with non-believers. And we would, you know... And, oh, and we, you know, we stick them out to convey unto them the religious experience. Yes, especially <laughs> unto wealthy widows and not-so-wealthy widows and daughters. Of rich families, yes. Uh, yes. For these unfortunates are the yes. easiest to separate from their heathen ways. And their heathen desires. And provide a steady stream of converts. And money. Uh, to the church. <laughs> yes, but what is it you would ask of us, brothers? Uh, what you see, our religious fervor uh, seems to have touched off some deep-seated religious uh, differences. And it seems we have needed to uh, 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 run away for our own personal safety. You see, Your Grace, uh, our distant relative, Mufasa Achu, has been to your lands, you know, and uh, recommends them for their <coughs> pastoral beauty. We wish to uh, visit for a while, if it were convenient for you, Your Grace. Mm -hmm. I have a few theological issues I wouldn't mind discussing. Uh, Mayla, brothers, you may stay in my lands for a time, but know this, should I catch you proselytizing to any of my subjects, especially my wife or daughters, I will hand you over to my headsman personally. Oh, to grass, we will maintain ourselves as quiet as church mass. Yes, and lay low amongst the peasantry, if it were. Excellent. <laughs> then you may stay. Um, be on your best behavior. Actually, be on even better behavior than that. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like this may be what we've been waiting for. You there! You there! Go and see who approaches! Oh, oh, man. 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 Oh, well, you say I already know who do to come with your grace. That answer is quite simple. And who art thou? Your grace, I am Francis Walsingham, Parliamentarian of Barnsbury and Oxfordshire. I am here on special envoy for Her Majesty the Queen. And why would she send thee here upon? I truly know not, your grace. Why do we not ask her yourself? God save the Queen! God save the Queen! And God save all of you, my good people. Now, Walsingham, give me a proper introduction. Very well, your majesty. Lords and ladies, may I introduce to you the shining jewel in England's crown. Elizabeth Tudor, by the grace of God, Queen of England, Ireland, and France, defender of the faith, etc., Regina Gloriana! I shall do, Walsingham. God save the Queen! God save the Queen! God save all of you, my good gentles. Do make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> Your Majesty, we were we were not expecting you. Woo! Well, good. Then my plans were successful. <laughs> we would have prepared a, a glorious celebration. Well, you see, it seems that there is already quite a celebration underway. Uh, Your Majesty, you said plan. Um, have we done something here in Northumberland to offend you, to draw such scrutiny? 
No, 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 heavens no. But you see, there have been rumours that have been spreading around the courts of London that have even reached our ears. Rumours? Yes, rumours. Rumours? Rumours. Rumours! I, I apologise, Your Majesty. Yes, rumours. We have heard things of uh, a pirate invasion last year, frequent visits by fairies, and also visits of royalty, such as King Edward, King Arthur, and King Robert the Bruce. But yet, Your Majesty, no Vikings. Vikings? <laughs> it is what they call the secret of Crossroads Woods. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Those rumors! <laughs> Completely false. I made most of them up myself. Well, may I ask why? Well, she's mentally unstable, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And violent! Yes. I can see that, but tell me, tell all of us, really, what does any of this have to do with Vikings? Vikings? Why, n nothing at all. I would not even know a Viking horn if I heard one. All right, very well. Sir, what is that? I already said I know not. <laughs> I, I, that, that sounded like a Viking horn, Your Majesty. Definitely would not know. Who are you to give me advice? 
I do not listen to the mewling of soft women dressed in fancy clothes and pandering to men. I am no man's plaything. How many men have you killed? Hundreds, I am afraid. And nearly every one of them saddens me. My name, young lady, is Elizabeth Tudor. And I am the Queen of England, Ireland, and France. And while I may not be able to face you in personal combat, do not be deceived that while you are here in my kingdom, among my people, your life is indeed in my hands. God save the Queen! God save the Queen! Now, Northumberland, would you kindly explain what in the blazes is going on here? Yeah, I would not mind knowing this is well. <laughs> do you believe in magic? Yes. No. If you do not believe, this would be a difficult answer. <laughs> Continue. Of course, as I said, though, I need to get some information first. Information? Yes, uh, Your Majesty, what year is it? What sort of question is that? Are you adult in the head? <laughs> uh, uh, King Boothley, what year is it? Very well, I shall play along with you. The year is 563 in the common system of the Romans. No, 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 I'm, I'm afraid you're quite misspoken, Your Majesty. The year is indeed 1563. Oh, there is no mistake, Elizabeth. Brunhilda! Accept in your conclusion. The year is indeed 563, as I was born in 543, and this year I celebrate my 20th natal day. Unless you are telling me that I am currently over... A thousand years old? Then the year is as plain as the nose <laughs> on my face. Except, Your Highness, that is where thou wouldst be wrong. The year is indeed 1563, and thou hast been brought here through time, and I'm assuming some amount of space. Ah, this is the magic that you spoke of. Aye, these woods are old and still filled with the eldritch magic. Yeah, yeah, these woods were old even when Eirik was the Yarl. Uh... But tell me, why? Why were we transported? That question is a little more difficult to answer. This shire is called Crossbird because it stands upon the crossroads of some old magic, and occasionally the forest will bring to us people from the future or the past who find themselves at a personal crossroad and need some assistance. We do what we can to help them. We know not how it works. This started long before my father's time. Your father knew of this, Your Majesty, but I can see the information has not made its way to you. Your father and his father before him have entrusted me in my line with keeping the secret safe, for we fear that the outside world were to learn of it no good would come of it. Yes, I see that, but what of all of them? Are they not a security risk? <laughs> and, and our visitors here, how is it that they speak perfect English? You can see the way they dress. They are obviously not from our time. Aye, and as for security, you imagine by the time they return to where they come from, we will all be long dead. And dead men hold no secrets. As for the magic, as for the language, that is part of the magic, we hear the words that they wish to convey. Though they may be speaking Norse, we hear English. So, the short of it is, <laughs> one of us is at a personal crossroads, yeah? But I see no impediment here. I only see perfection. Ah, ah, my daughter! My daughter is soon to be married and join two kingdoms. Unless Gunther is able to defeat me, which I sincerely doubt, there will be no marriage. Daughter, you drive me to the edge of my patience. Father, you drive me to the edge of my reason. I am a sworn shield maiden, and were I not your only legitimate offspring, and we would not be having this discussion. <laughs> I am your heir, and I have gone so far as to agree to marry for the good of the kingdom, but my husband shall be worthy. I am worthy, and I will meet you in any challenge of your choosing, Brunhilde, save that of sewing or cooking. <laughs> well, perhaps, 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 perhaps we can be of some assistance there. How? How? You'll notice in this amphitheater you stand upon a giant chessboard. Later on this day at three of the clock, we shall be having a combat chess. Normally, each side would field their own participants. However, in the interest of fairness, 
those who wish to participate shall be evenly distributed between both sides. And lest you fear, we do not test your own strength. You would be represented on the board and may take part as necessary. Agreed? Aye. If that be a fit test for you, Brunhilde, then I agree to it. If you think yourself worthy, then I shall agree as well. Aha! Ah, it is a match! I thank you for your kind proposal. You are most welcome, Your Majesty, and as you are my guest here, I urge you to go about my shire and enjoy this festival day. Oh, I will. I will, Your Grace, and I thank you. I will enjoy this day to its fullest. <laughs> for now. <laughs> I have a quarry. I have prayed to search for something that is most magnificent. This will be an interesting day of that, I am sure. But your grace, know that we must speak more of this anon, for I am not pleased having been kept in the dark these last five years. Your Majesty, I promise you by the end of the day, I shall make all plain to you, but I fear for now these good people are tired of listening to me blather on. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my good people, I do invite you to return here upon at three of the clock and witness this contest of skill and strength twixt Brunder <laughs> and Brunhilde. Perhaps we will see Brunhilde discover her destiny. And at 345, my good husband, I do humbly invite you to join us for a Duke and Duchess feast. More information about that it can be found at the first tent. Aye, but for now, Your Majesty, I will attend to you. As for the rest of you, what, what are you all still doing here? Go! Go and enjoy yourself! <laughs> Now go do something. Guards and ladies, are you ready for a chess match? Oh, yeah. And ladies, are you ready for a chess match? Chess match! Yeah. Then welcome to the amphitheater chess board where we have an exciting chess match for you this day. If you weren't here earlier, the issue is this. The beautiful shield maiden Brunhilde has declared that she shall not marry no man, no prince, that is not worthy of her. So despite her father's insistence that she married Prince Gunther of Burgundy. Yeah. 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 She wishes to test his ability. So there we have our match. Brunel's on the blue side. Guts on the yellow side. Burgundy! Burgundy! Now then, as promised, the pieces have been evenly distributed between either side, so this should be a fair contest of strength and skill. Brunhilde, does your side stand at the ready? And you do agree to the terms that should Gunther defeat thee, thou shalt marry him. And after your father Excellent. Gunther, is your side at the ready? Thou dost also agree that should thou lose, thou shalt release thy claim of matrimony upon Brunhilde? Very well then, brother, Aye. I turn this match over to you and I trust, as a man of the cloth, that this shall be run cleanly and clearly. Of course it will, that's an excellent expectation, your grace. On with the festivities! Dump the pieces of this board! Oh, the rules of human chess are thus. When one piece takes, tries to take on another, there will be a resulting match. If that piece wins, they stay on the board. If that piece loses, they leave the board. All these matchups will be fought with weapons of personal choice, but they should be blunted so that we can prevent injury. Also, the Duke has the final word on everything. Cheating is not encouraged. Um, cheating is not allowed. That's what I said, denied. Not exactly. Well, anyway, let's get on with the match. Gunther, you to the yellow side. First move is yours. Thank you, it's Gunther. 
That's what I said.
Kara! And did you have a winner? Pieces on the floor! On the board! On the board! On the board! Back on the board! I'm on the board! You know what, Gunther? I will let you have this move. I'm going to let you have this move. Let you have this move. Trouble, I can tell. He's, he's not going to fight again. This matchup is be between, once again, Lady Margaret Stanley. Yeah. Her opponent this time is Sir Nicholas Buddington the Fifth. Yeah. Here we go, Sir Nicholas. Let us keep with this theme of civility. I shall choose a rapier to toss in a dagger for some spikes. Enough! Enough! 
Because I declare the brothers to be the winners! The pieces regain the board, confirm the moves are out. Finally, a match when no one is related to oh, each other. Oh, did you say related? Then I trust my shield sister, Spot Hilda, to find me! I'm not even blood. Never mind. Jack Bowe, do you have a second? Oh, you get a second to us! I was just getting a snack. Yeah, maybe later. Uh -huh. yeah. We Reach up, Spot and Shield! Peace out! Attack! 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 Attack
to be Prince Gunther! Save the Duke and Duchess! Save the Duke and Duchess! 